Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Chen Yan. I'm a tech lead in the finance intelligence team. Uh, my talk is Applied AI in Finance Forecasting. So at Uber, we have tons of data science models across the entire company. And my team's mission is to build software to harness all these models together. And the goal is to help Uber make the best financial decisions. So let's take a look of, uh, at how we do that. First, a little bit about me. Um, I've been at Uber for almost four years. I started out in the growth team and I was building a promotion and incentive platform uh, to spend Uber's money. And then I had a change of heart. So I moved to the fraud team uh, actually uh, to save money. Last year in this conference, I did a tech talk in the China incentive fraud uh, problem and that was a lot of fun. After that, I've transitioned to finance intelligence. So now my job is to tell other people how to spend Uber's money wisely. Um, so here are some business facts about Uber. Um, as a global company, we operate in hundreds of cities across the world. Um, we have almost 40 billion gross booking and that's not including Uber Eats, which is growing insanely fast. Um, our products serve tens of millions of uh, users and trips every day. So to run a business of, of this scale, the financial planning process cannot be just a few folks tinkering in the Excel, Excel spreadsheet, which by the way, used to be the case. But thankfully, now the process is data-driven and is powered by intelligent models. Here's the outline of my talk. First, I'm going to explain the problem space. So in addition to uh, the need of leveraging intelligent models that I had just mentioned, we also have a very special process here at Uber in terms of uh, financial planning. These two reasons combined determines that we cannot just use out of the box software provided uh, by, by IBM or Oracle. We have to build our own. And then the second half, I'm going to give a high level overview of the software solutions that we built here. And we will do a deep dive on the middle layer, which is scenario planning and, and optimization, specially designed to tackle the, uh, the challenges in our financial planning process. So uh, the process. Um, why do we need to define our own process and specifically why do we need to build our own software for it? The first reason is intelligence. I've already mentioned data science models but machine uh, intelligence is not enough. We also want to leverage human intelligence. Uh, we have amazing local team on the ground in hundreds of different cities, and they have the local knowledge that our, our model, machine learning models may or may not have incorporated. But we need to build tools to combine the power of these two types of intelligence. The second reason is agility. We need to be sensitive to market dynamics. If our competitor, raise two billion round of new funding, we need to adjust our strategy rather quickly. We cannot afford to wait till the next year after our next financial uh, planning cycle concludes. And the third reason is scalability. How do we scale this very complex financial planning process across 600 uh, and more local markets to achieve both local efficiency and global optimal? These are the challenges that we face. So what exactly does financial planning entail? The first step is uh, strategic planning. And this is, uh, the goal is to achieve global optimal. And this is ultimately driven by CEO and CFO. They answer the question on the strategic investment level. For example, for Latin America market, it's new, it's fast growing. For next year, our strategic goal may be to uh, double down on growth. If our goal is to increase the number of trips by 100%, how should we invest our money? How much should we in invest in each market? And then the second phase is operation. The people involved in this phase is uh, uh, local, uh, local teams in different cities. Their goal is to increase their business efficiency and they focus on specific business metrics. The typical, um, a typical question they want to ask or something like, if I increase my market spending by this much how, much, how many new drivers and new riders can we get? 
And then the third phase is insight. So now business is running. We need to monitor the performance and health of the business all the time. Are we on target or not? And if not, uh, shall we adjust our target or what shall we do? And last but not least, have we learned uh, something new from the new historical data that we collect and how can we improve our models? We used to do this uh, financial planning on an annual basis and now we move to a continuous base with, which we call rolling forecast. I'm gonna explain what I mean. So on an annual basis, um, the first step of um, uh, strategic planning happens at the end of last fiscal year. Um, the output, the, the result of um, strategic planning is a budget allocation down to every city. And that budget is locked down for the entire year for the next fiscal year. After the strategic planning concludes, the new year starts. Each city team get their budget and get their uh, baseline of uh, business metrics and target they need to hit. And their goal is to hit the target within the budget. And each city kind of do, uh, do it differently. They have different processes and they use different tools. Some cities have intelligent models to help them uh, guide the decision making. But a lot of cities, they do not have that. They need to follow their guts and solely rely on the local expert knowledge. There are apparent drawback of this process. Um, the strategic planning and operation are completely separated. They, are, uh, they were run by different people, strategic planning by HQ and operation by city teams. There was no model sharing and lack of uh, knowledge sharing in general. And more importantly, uh, by making strategic decision on an annual basis does not allow us to react fast if our major competitor make a main move. For that reason, uh, now we are doing financial planning uh, on a rolling forecast base. On a high level, the most noticeable difference is that we now do finance uh, the strategic planning on a continuous basis, uh, let's say monthly. But behind the curtain, there are a lot more changes. The models are actually now shared by strategic planning and operation, and the models are retrained and updated every month so that all aspects of our business can benefit from it. So to summarize the advantage of a rolling forecast, um, we now can adjust and improve our strategy on a continuous basis. We consolidate our uh, uh, business process and we reuse software and tools which allow us to reuse models and share, uh, share knowledge across different business uh, aspects. That was about the process. So now let's zoom in a little bit more to see what happens, what exactly what we do in strategic planning and also operation. Strategic planning is um, uh, done by uh, HQ on the global level. It's budget optimization problem. They allocate budget down to every city across the world. And the goal is to achieve global optimal. Um, Operation, on the other hand, is done by each different city. And it's a bottom-up uh, process. And the process, we call it scenario planning. And what they typically want to do is they want to adjust different lever and see how they impact their business metrics. If I increase or decrease my market spending, uh, how many more or less trips can I get? Those are, uh, those are uh, key to the local teams to increase, to maximize their business efficiency. So let's look at them separately. Uh, let's first look at the strategic planning. Uh, how, how do we do budget allocation? Uh, first, we need to decide what to optimize on. And there are a lot of things that we can optimize on. Uh, we can choose to maximize number of trips. We can choose to maximize gross booking. We can choose to minimize um, uh, marketing spending, for example. And uh, um, that's the objective input in this graph into the optimizer. Along with the objective, we can also pass in a list of constraints. An example of constraints can be, um, I don't want to spend more than $100 million in US in the month of October. Why is that? Because that's Halloween and we know that we are going to have very strong organic growth. So that statement, spend no, longer, no, no more than $100 million in October in, in US, that's a constraint that we can pass into that problem. 
And then optimizer take, um, take this input uh, and uh, the output of the, of the optimizer is budget allocation down to every city. Each city gets its budget um, and uh, the, uh, the baseline forecasted uh, business metrics along with uh, spending guideline. Spending guidance is uh, how exactly how much they should spend every week. It's a time series. So budget um, optimization can not only run on a global level, we can actually pick any random abstraction to run optimization on. This is very valuable for us because uh, even if, uh, especially because we are a global business, we have a different strategy, a strategic focus in different region. United States, for example, is a relatively mature market. And uh, next year's goal, maybe we want to hit profitability. In this case, we might want to set the optimization objective to be let's maximize uh, net inflow or net contribution. But Latin America is a different story. It's a new market, it's fast growing. Next year, we are going to focus on different things. We are going to focus on growth. So in this case, we might want to set the objective to be maximize the number of trips and maybe given uh, some constraints of uh, spending in, in specific uh, countries, Brazil, for example. So this gave us the uh, flexibility to optimize our global business, but also stay on target and be flexible for each mega region. So the second part is uh, bottom up planning from uh, each local city team. A scenario is a collection of the essential business metrics that we care about. Um, spending is a metric, number of sign up is a metric, number of uh, uh, trips is a metric, uh, is a metric, gross booking, net inflow, they are all metrics. After strategic planning, each city gets a base scenario, which is what HQ think of what your metric should be. But local teams, more often than not, they know more uh, about their specific local market than HQ. So I might disagree with uh, if, you, if I spend this much money in acquisition, HQ tell me I can get this much sign up. I disagree because I know Taylor Swift is going to have a concert next week, next month, but the model didn't catch, didn't catch that. Me, as a member in the uh, local city team, I go in this, uh, the, into this tool, I override the metrics I disagree with, and then I create a new scenario. As a matter of fact, the city teams can create as many scenarios as they want and pick the scenario that's most relevant to the current situation. And this is how we bring the human intelligence and combine that into the overall decision making. So I've said a lot about the problem. How do we translate that and express that into an in engineering problem and solve that programmatically? This is a collection of software that our team built. The top layer is an interactive UI and tooling that we built for the uh, corporate finance people and local city teams. Um, in the middle layer, the scenario management platform is how we calculate uh, metrics based on uh, and, com and compose the model to calculate metrics. And underneath that, we have machine learning model to train those, uh, to train those models that includes training, back testing, and experimentation. And of course, all good models are trained with good data. So on the, uh, on the lower la uh, layer, we have data pipeline and data warehouse. Let's zoom into the uh, scenario planning uh, platform and talk uh, and look at an example. Um, as I mentioned before, a scenario is a collection of metrics. The metrics have dependencies, for example, um, if I change the value of acquisition spend, the number of sign up will of course change. But exactly how it changed, that's calculated by a trained model. In this case, that's the cost curve in the, mid, in, in the middle. And all of this composition uh, together, it, uh, it's a scenario. And you may already notice that a scenario is a directed graph. Each node is a metric and each edge is a model. The model is a calculation that takes from input metrics to output metrics. So given the initial metric, which is the uh, entry point, uh, entry, entry nodes of that graph, if we run all this model in topological order, we get all the metrics that we need. 
So imagine after strategic planning uh, budget allocation, the base scenario I get, uh, I'm a city team, I get is this. Um, HQ decided to give me $200 acquisition spend, $100 engagement spend. I run that through cost curve, and uh, uh, the model tells me that 200 acquisition spent is going to give me 35 new signups. But uh, as a, I, I'm a city team, I know Taylor Swift is coming, so I disagree. I think 200 acquisition uh, spent will get me not 35, but 50 signups. So I run the rest of the, um, the graph in topological order, and then I get an updated uh, Gross booking, oh, it used to be, gross booking used to be $4,150. But now I think $4,600 is more accurate. This is how, again, this is how city teams add their human intelligence into this. And by the way, this is a super simplified uh, example of a scenario. A real scenario kind of look like this, but and this is only a part of it. Um, the best thing about the scenario planning platform is that the shape of this scenario is not hard-coded hard in our system at all. We build a parser and we provide an interface to allow anyone to compose, to express their business. They can define their metrics. They can bring in their own trained models and run their um, financial uh, planning needs according to their needs. In fact, we already onboard Uber Eats to do their financial planning in our next release. And uh, it does not require any engineering involvement. So now you understand how scenario planning uh, works. Let's go back to optimization problem. I mentioned earlier in the talk that strategic planning and operation, they are sharing models. What do I mean by that? Strategic planning uh, do budget allocation is an optimization problem. They, let's say, um, in strategic planning, we want to optimize on gross booking. Then I define my objective to, max, to be maximize gross booking. The algorithm of optimization will take that problem and translate that into a list of uh, model configurations. And then we take that configuration and literally create thousands and more scenarios and run all of them. If our goal is to maximize gross booking, we can simply examine the output of those uh, scenarios and pick the one with the maximum number in gross booking. It sounds very simple, right? But actually, the brain of the system is the translation from the problem to the list of configurations. That's dictated by the optimization algorithm. We now use uh, convex optimization algorithm and also gradient descent. And our data science are, develop, are in the process of developing more advanced models, to, uh, algorithm to solve that. That's how we uh, scale our process into hundreds of, uh, hundreds of different markets in, ac across, the, across the world. And that's how we scale this process uh, across time and geo. Um, we have several next steps that we need to do uh, in our team. This uh, scenario planning and optimization system is actually very generic. It's, it can be applied to any resource allocation kind of problem. We now um, support finance uh, planning purpose for corporate finance and for, Uber, for the uh, ride sharing business and for Uber Eats. We are onboarding the marketing uh, uh, allocation optimization problem as well. And we are looking into other space like human resource optimization, uh, hardware allocation. So we have a lot to do. And that concludes my talk.